Here's a pass here, MJ19. Oh, actually, sorry about that. It's a little error. Not MJ19, but it is FM19. So do a little correction there. Okay, define the capacitors or parallel capacitor. By now, you should already know, oh man, Q equals to CV, C equals to Q over V, but be specific, they want parallel plate capacitor. So, you can say it's the ratio of charge stored. Over what? Ah? Store where? Ah? On one plate of the capacitor. Yeah, and then to the PD across it. So potential difference is PD. I suggest you write out the whole thing. I'm just shortcutting here a little bit so I can write faster. So this is the V law here. This one uh, can have two marks. Some older parts here will give you three marks for it. That's quite a lot. But here, charge store on one plate, PD across plate. That's A1. So first one is you say ratio of Q or V. Okay. And that is M1A1. Okay, moving on. This is the build your capacitor type of question. Very open-ended. And it's only one mark. So don't spend too much time here. A uh, student has three capacitors. Two have four ohm. Uh, four ohm. Four mu farad. One has eight mu farad. Draw label circuit diagrams to show how this may be connected to give a total capacitance of 1.6. So it's kind of a trial and error. You kind of have to know which one to connect. You got a lot of space, right? You try and error. Lo. So this one, uh, 1.6. That's way smaller than any of these fellas. So I suspect they will connect everything in series. So trial and error, you just like, hmm. Because when you connect in series, the total capacitance decreases. C total decreases. So probably have to use 4 mu F. Mm. And if you choose a calculator to check a little bit, or just plug in some random numbers, do a few quick calculations, you realize actually it's 4, 4, 6. That is a combination to get you this exact small thing. Okay, so... Yeah, if you want to write the working, sure, but you don't have to. So this is 4 mu plus 1 over 4 mu plus 1 over... I kind of did try and error two times, then I knew the answer. But this will give you 1.6 mu. Okay, so this is how you can do this. Over time, you do this more, you will be able to guess it faster. But if you get stuck during exam, it's only one mark. It's okay, do the rest first. So this is a B1 if you label and draw. Now the next one, 10 mu. Well, this one was definitely harder. I was like, hmm, there are many ways to connect three capacitors. Pretty much, you probably will need some in series, some in parallel. So what I did was, um, there's three, right? I kind of wrote out all the combos down here. What if you got two? Four mu plus four mu in series because I have to do extra calculations. So this total will be two mu because, you know, halved. Then if it's four... And 6, why right here, 6 mu. This one will give me a total of 2.4. Now, this one I know definitely cannot have this combo already because it's got 0.4. We only need 10. So one more combo is 6 mu farads and 6 mu farad. So this one will be 3 mu farad. Hmm. How to get 10? Uh? In series, probably have to add 8, pl 8 and 4. 8 plus 3, 4 plus 3, 8 plus 2, oh, 8 plus 2 equals to 10. So probably I might use this. So I have to connect the 8. Do I have an 8? Oh yes, I do. Have, did I say 6? Oh my goodness. This is 8. <laughs> this is also 8. Miscal miswriting. So 8 plus 2 is correct. So I need, I need an 8 mu. In series with this combination. So I need to do something like this. Try and error. Lah. Many, many different ways to connect three capacitors together. So this will be uh, total 2 mu. So 8 plus 2, 10. Oh, okay, very good. Found the answer. So try and error. Do some calculations. If you're not sure, maybe it's a good practice to draw all the possible combinations of three uh, capacitors. So you have three in series. One is not in series, or you could have all three parallel like this. You can kind of deal with a combination or rearrangement of any of these uh, numbers eight and four, four and eight, 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 four, 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 eight, 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 eight four, four, four. Okay, now you go and play with it. Try and error two marks. Okay, 
Now, the one I want to show you today is this one. A little bit out of the topic of capacitors. This is actually stepping into the territory of another chapter in A2 that talks about AC circuits, alternating current, up, down, up, down, up, down. So here you have an alternating current, AC generator, a bridge rectifier. We will learn more of this in the later chapter, in the AC chapter. It basically converts AC to DC, but it doesn't do it exactly properly. So you need the help of a capacitor and the purpose of this capacitor is to smooth or do some smoothing on the sinusoidal wave so ac comes out like this and you're like oh yeah but i want a dc how do i do that this circuit you will learn more about this in the ac chapter if you haven't learned it already okay so what is this where does this come from huh? hmm let me show you a very quick simulation of what ac is like so here i have an ac source plug in there what shall i connect let's connect a resistor yeah sort of simple and nice so a resistor connected you see uh, all the electrons are already chilling in the wire but what happens when you connect it dun, dun, dun. notice the pattern of these electrons what are they doing they're dancing like that left and right left and right so you can visualize that by looking at the voltage changes so maybe i say what's the voltage across this resistor and you see a sinusoidal wave, either sine or cosine, whichever one it is. This is what we call AC. You want to get rid of it sometimes, right? Because of, let's say you want to do something like maybe, I don't know, power generator, light bulb, and then just like, wow, I don't want, our house supply is all AC, but I want a DC. How can I convert? And that is your bridge rectifier lah, that we looked at just now. So <laughs> fun fact, what if you put like a capacitor here how will it look like ah let's try and see you see the capacitor charge discharge charge discharge ah yeah doesn't get to store any energy but we're gonna use a capacitor in our current scenario to smooth out this sinusoidal pattern for voltage and also current lah sure you can look at current also nah see the current go forward backward forward backward so that would be this pattern right there okay back to the question so our bridge rectifier here, just make sure that it's only positive part coming in. So here got positive, here got negative. Ma. So it can be either something like this. Boing, 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 boing. This is a, a type of rectifier. Or it could be just cutting off the negative part. So boing, no negative part. Positive part, no negative part. So either one of these could work for rectifier. But anyway... This is not great. So usually you want to smooth out this thing with a capacitor. And that's the purpose of the capacitor over there. So it'd be hard to smooth. Lah. Maybe like this. So judging from the shape, maybe it might be the first case a little bit. Yeah, the shape of it. Charge. And then here is like this charge. So how does the capacitor work? When there's uh, some current coming out of the bridge rectifier, that's when it's charging. So maybe something like from here, whoops, where is my thing from? Let's say here to here, looks like it's going to be charging the capacitor when there is voltage coming through from the bridge rectifier. Then there will be times where there's nothing. So this is the discharging of the capacitor. Okay, discharge where? Le? Well, charging come in like that. Ma. Then nothing already. Then the capacitor will release and discharge this way through the resistor back to itself. Okay, so something like that. Okay, what are we trying to do here? Use the data to determine the energy transfer from capacitor C to, to resistor R during time T1 and T2. Oh, so we're looking for what happens, how much energy is discharged throughout this entire time. Then you think about the energy transfer to R. When is the capacitor giving R the energy? When it's discharging. Discharge through R, ma, so energy transfer to R. So that will be during specifically this period of time. Okay, let's calm down and look at our question first. Energy, when you see the word energy, think of this one. Half Q, uh, we don't really know the Q, but we do know the C. And from here, you want to find energy change or energy transferred. So that will be a delta E. Okay, so uh, 
half CV final minus CV initial. Oh, I forgot the square. C is the same, so I'm going to leave that. So V final minus V initial squared. So we do half. Capacitance is 47 mu. Now the voltage, what do we minus? Ah? <laughs> what is the change in voltage of the capacitor? Hmm. We don't know, but we do know it's related to the uh, variation of voltage across resistor R. Because ne, same ma, my voltage, your voltage, we are in parallel. Okay. So we can assume that you can use this graph to understand as well. So there is a change in voltage. The energy transfer happens when it is discharging, capacitor discharging. So that means you have somewhere from here to here during this period of time, that is when there's an energy transfer happening. So from there, go to here. Doo -doo -doo. Now, how would you find this value? Oh, yeah, you go and find. Like, this is about 7, I think. This looks like 7. So here is 7 volts. Drop down to, if I look correctly, this is 4 volts. So you kind of have to zoom in a bit and see. 7 to 4, 4 to 7. So I'm going to do, oh, so there's an energy transfer to the resistor. That is 7 minus 4. Mm. This will give me about 7.76 7, times 10, negative 4. Or I can write as 2 SF, which is fine too. 7.8 times 10, negative 4 joules. This one is A1. Equation C. Substitution of this thing, C1. So they want, they, this one of the hard thing of this question is, do you know what V to use? Ah? Why go so many? Where to read from the graph? Why is the change in potential across the capacitor? Which we don't know. But we do know the change in potential across the resistor. So from there you can infer. Oh, oh. changing potential happening there. Okay. So that is this our sneak peek of AC circuits. And I think that is all for this question. So I will see you in the next question around.